Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another Prep Hour with Steve. I'll just set up my background here. There we go. Hope this finds you well in whatever part of the world you are. I've been away for a couple of months, so it's good to be back. And uh, hope everything is as good as can be where you are and you're managing with the Delta virus and everything else. Uh, it's just gone 5 p.m. It's the 18th of August, 2021, 5 p.m. where I'm located in Brisbane. Uh, tell us where you are and what time it is, and then we'll get started. And I'm just going to check all my setups are working. I'm streaming on OET Online, Facebook, and YouTube, and I'm also streaming on OET Centre, Facebook, and YouTube. So I can see the YouTube channel's working lovely. I've just got to check the Facebook one. I'll just let me check if OET Centre Facebook is working for me. There it is. It's good. I'll just put a hello there. All right, that's my Facebook communication happening as well. I think we are good to go. See if I can get a few comments. If you're watching this on Facebook, just type in hello there. All right, just waiting for a few to come in there. Hello from Fiji. Hello to Zimbabwe. Hello to Tatiana there in the UK. It's very sunny to Rajesh. That's lovely. Um, where else have we got? Another couple in Zimbabwe. Wonderful. Hello to Poland there. Katazina. Um, hello, all you Facebook people as well. Good to see those thumbs up, everyone. Um, okay, Zambia. Welcome, Zambia. I can see even a few names I know. Wonderful to see a few regulars as well. UK is here. Hello to Turkey. England, wow. Saab, Mr. Prep Hour. Well, we're back today, Saab. That's good. And Saab passed everything. Good on you, Saab. That's excellent. Okay. And hello to Canada um, and Nepal. All right. And Sweden, Sudan, everywhere. All right. We've got a global audience. Let's get cracking, everyone. Now, we're going to do reading part A today. We'll go through it all, then we'll open it up for a bit of a Q&A session at the end. So let's get started. Um, and we're going to have a strategic approach because I think it's all about planning for part A. You've got to have the right mindset. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. Um, don't forget to like us, of course, on Facebook and YouTube and all those things and visit OET Online, our website, oetonline.net.au, to see our great course options, but we'll talk about that later. Let's talk about reading part A, everyone. Now, I've got a couple of images here that I thought we could just chat about at first. So um, on the left, you can see this clock ticking time pressure. That's all about part A, isn't it? Part A is about time pressure. Is that how you feel, everyone? Type in your thoughts when you um, think about part A. What comes to mind reading part A? And on the second image, we can see a guy with a, a um, magnifying glass searching for something. What's he searching for, everyone? You might know that idiom if you do share it with us. Now, while I'm waiting, Lara says, hey, it's Luz from Bristol. She's saying, thanks, amazing, um, and we helped you pass OET. That's wonderful, Lara. Thank you for coming on and sharing that with us. That isn't solicited, everyone. That's real. <laughs> Thank you, Lara, and congratulations to you. 
Uh, yes, time management, that's what comes to mind. Yes, Christine, it's all about time management. And Rashid says time pressure. Uh, yes, it's time focus, that's right. And Christina also identified, now this poor chap here, look at this, everyone, look at this poor chap. Do you ever feel like this? Is this you doing reading part A? Do you feel like you're searching for a needle in a haystack? Is that how you feel? A few people identified that one. Because it shouldn't be like that, everyone. It shouldn't be like that. Part A should not be like trying to find a needle in a haystack because if you are really having that approach where things are random, then you're in trouble. You're not going to be able to find that needle in that 15-minute time frame. That's why we need a strategy. A few people are coming up with the right words here. You need the ability to skim. You need the ability to scan. These are vital skills that we're going to have to apply. You don't want to be this poor guy because this guy doesn't have a strategy. He's just looking and he has no idea where to find it. OET Part A is not like that, everyone. What is OET Part A like? Well, let's talk mm. about test construct. How did OET Centre design this test? It's not an accident. They planned it. Remember, OET's goal, you know, it's occupational English test. It's a workplace English test. So their goal is to replicate the workplace with tasks. And Part A does that relatively well, except perhaps the added addition of time pressure, but we can deal with that if we're strategic. So how do you know it's designed to replicate the workplace? Well, the four texts that you get um, describe a typical medical situation. It's a medical situation. There are four texts. And as you would in the workplace, in the workplace, you might be treating your patient. You might have to work out a medication dosage or a procedure or something you need to do. There's information you need to extract. So you go to your books, your tablet, or where, whatever document you need, you find that information, you treat that patient. That's what part A is trying to replicate. And it's not random. Uh, random won't work. So the point is the flow of information in the four texts will be logical. And you can use that to help you with speed. And you can use your medical knowledge to locate information more quickly and strategically. You will be able to do that with the right approach. So two examples here, just from random tasks. Malaria, I know there was a recent um, OET Centre Part A exam just in the last few weeks was on malaria. Um, malaria is a common topic. Um, so here's an example. You might find text A in the exam would be about background, classifications, perhaps a bit of an overview. You quite often get that in text A. Text B may describe the symptoms. Text C the lab testing once you've identified the symptoms and text D will be about treatment. So that's logical. So when you go and search information, you'll be able to go, aha, I should be able to find the answer to this question in text A or B or C or D based on that logic. Now, and you look at tetanus, another one. Text A, maybe text A is describing symptoms this time. Um, now it's tetanus, so the text B could be about the risk factors associated with tetanus. We know there are a lot. Text C, pardon me, it's a bit sensitive. Text C could be immunization with tetanus. There's an immunization schedule, so it could have information about that. Text D could be, again, 
about treatment. So that's logical, isn't it? That's logical. So part A is logical. It's not random. All right. You with me so far? Are we all good? Mm. George says, is it me or recently the content as part A increased? Now, I don't think it's increased. Just every exam is different. That's all. Okay. Now, let's continue. So this is after I've done a lot of Part A tasks and I've taught a lot of Part A in our classes and to students and we've analysed it to the umpteenth degree. And overall, I'd say the best approach is start with your skim, right? Skim the four texts. And you really want to allow about three minutes for that skimming. You really do. Because if you shorten it, then you're not probably skimming thoroughly enough, but that gives you your foundation. So I would skim the four texts and then allow three minutes. If you're a quick skimmer, you may be able to do it in two minutes, all right? But on average, and for a lot of people, I think three minutes will give you a good skim. Then you've got your matching questions, one to seven. You've got your matching questions. If you've done a really good job skimming, you'll be able to ace these questions in just a couple of minutes. So hopefully by the time five minutes has passed, you've already answered seven questions. And then a few people said, Ria said, you'll have too much mind pressure. But if you start strongly, that pressure will ease and you'll get on with the job, all right? Then sentence completion. Now, this is where the scanning comes in. Once you start answering uh, sentence completion questions where you've got to find words, you're going to be scanning for that particular word. But again, if you've done good skimming, that will be easier. And then you're going to get short answer questions. Again, you're just going to have to answer a particular question. You're going to have to scan to find that information. This is time consuming because you really have to move around a lot. It's a needle in a haystack analogy, but with an ordered approach is what we want. Okay, so that's the way you should approach it. Uh, some people say I like to start with sentence completion first or short answers. And look, that's possible if it works for you. I've seen that work effectively. But the vast majority of people that um, I work with say they prefer to follow the order of the questions. They don't need to change it up. And that's the way the test is designed. And that's what we're going to do in an activity today. Okay, quick word on skimming before we actually do it. So what is skimming, everyone? Well, it's like we can see this uh, young boy here skimming rocks across the surface. Um, and that's what skimming is. You're not uh, going across the whole surface. You're just bouncing along, getting key bits of information. So um, you won't read every word. But what you should do when you skim is pay special attention to certain features in the text. And by that, I mean headings. Headings are great if you get them. They're not always there, but you should get a few. Bullet points are great because they just give you organization. Um, you're going to have to look at tables. Most OET Part A tasks in reading have tables or graphs to look at. So you've got to be good with these with this type of presentation. Look for boldface and italics because that will tell you something's a little bit different. Um, look for indenting and look for asterisks because asterisks are often those little points down the bottom of the page, might be in a smaller font size, but quite often answers are hidden where you see these asterisks. So look out for all of those things when you're skimming. A um, few more points I'll just go through. Good skimmers do not skim everything at the same rate. 
They don't. And they don't, pardon me, they don't skim everything at the same rate or give equal attention. So when you're skimming, when it gets a bit complicated or important, you may slow down. You might read that whole sentence because you'll identify that sentence is important. So you will take your time. Um, another good strategy I recommend to everyone, read the first one to three sentences of each text to pick up the main idea, particularly if it's a dense text. Just start reading it going through, um, getting an idea. You can do that. There's time. Then the remainder, you just skim through underlining a few key words. Now, an important one in number four here is peripheral vision. Who knows what I mean by peripheral vision? Have a think about that. What do I mean by peripheral vision? While I'm answering, while you're answering, I'll check a few questions. Michelle says, is it okay to write in all caps? Hmm. I suppose if that's your writing style, Michelle, I think that would be okay. I wouldn't really advise that too much. You've just got to be consistent. But uh, I don't, it's spelling is important in part A. Um, spelling is important in part A. Um, just be consistent with your writing style. Uh, George says you can't underline the question paper. No, no. Remember on your question paper, you can have pen in hand. So you can definitely use work off your paper. Uh, Diana's got a question. Uh, may I ask if during the exam day, do we have an answer sheet? Reading buckles is the same. We should write our answers. So There'll be a separate booklet. You'll have a page with your Part A text and another page with your answers. So you'll be able to uh, answer in separate booklets. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, no one answered peripheral vision. So what I mean by peripheral vision is, I'll show you in a moment, but your vision goes sideways. So you can actually see um, words out to the right or left, and that helps with speed. Peripheral vision, so not straight ahead, but looking out to your left and right. Reading on a broader scope is really useful. You want to do some chunking, everyone. Uh, aim to read two or three words at a time. Chunking is key. Um, don't just read single words. And, of course, underline your keywords. Uh, what words are you going to underline? Well, um, symptoms, like medical words or phrases. It's a medical text, definitely. Symptoms are good. Procedures, medications, risk factors, all those. A lot of nouns, some verbs, very important side effects or contraindications. Look for that stuff. Um, you might see numbers. I'm not necessarily, you might underline a few numbers, but for me, numbers stand out on their own. So I don't really think you need to underline numbers that much, but just be aware that they're there. Um, as you read, you can ask yourself questions. What are they talking about? Why, you know, who, what, where, when, why? That general ideas in your head to engage trying to work out the topic of each text. Um, and lastly here, skimming is always faster than reading, much faster. But do slow down in the introductory or concluding sentences, particularly introductory. Um, an unfamiliar word you want to slow down, um, that's really common in the MCQ part of the exam. Um, and also, if material is very complicated, again, that comes back to MCQs. Um, but even in reading part A, there'll be complicated little sections where you've got to find that answer. You've gone to all the trouble to locate it. You will have to slow down and read to understand to get the answer for some of those questions. Okay. Let's do a little practice, everyone. I'm going to bring up a new share for you here. 
this is going to get a little bit complicated. And I hope you're, what do you, tell me what you're watching on. Who's watching on a mobile phone? Who's watching on a laptop or a tablet? Who's watching on a desktop? This will work a little bit better if you have a larger screen, everyone, because I'm going to do a big screen share here. And this is definitely going to work a little bit better if you have a bigger screen. So just bear with me while I set this up so we can do our activity. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Mobile phone. Well, good luck on your smartphone. This might appear a little bit small to you. Um, but give it a go, everyone. Let's see how we go. All right, now I'll just do a special share, I think, for this activity. All right, can everyone see that screen okay? Can everyone see that screen? I'm hoping that's working for everyone. All right. Now I'll explain it and hopefully this is gonna work for you. So this I'm gonna do fractures. Now I'm doing the OET center task. I'm using text one, but I've added i've written my own questions so these you might know the fracture task it's on the oet center website it's on fractures one of the first ones they did um but i've created some new questions for this all right so you won't know these questions a bit blurry yes um it's probably the best we can do really just let me guide you through Try to make it a little bit bigger for you. There we go. Hopefully that size works a little bit. Now on the left-hand side, we can see, now I'll make this a little bit different everyone if you like. Well, let's start with this text A. Okay, now if I'm working off this everyone, I've got one more thing I've got to do. If my... Zoom allows me, just one sec. It to be slightly tricky to do, but we'll get there. Now Zoom needs to comply with me here. Okay. So what I would do, I'm going to show you this little thing. So I'm going to do my skimming, everyone. So in order to skim, I'm going to skim fractures. Okay, I've got a heading, nice. Uh, and I'm going, to, I'm going to read this. Buckle or break in the bone can often occur. So let me move that out of the road. And then I'm just going to direct or indirect injury. I'm looking at these words. I will read this first sentence. Clinically, fractures are... Now, I, when I read bullet points, I'm not going to read that extra detail there. I've just got the main word. Then I'm going to look at my heading, this location, and peripheral vision. I just pick up words like this. That's my peripheral vision working. I'm not reading this location is where a bone is completely, but I do pick up on the word displaced. My peripheral vision draws me there. And um, sprain. And I might just go disruption ligament. I think that's enough. So I've got a general idea here. Can anyone tell me what is the topic of part A in this example? What's the topic of part A? 
We've read it now. We've got a general idea. People are saying it's better. That's good. So what is the topic? What's it about? Definitions, yeah. It is like a definition. Definition, that's right. So it's a sort of a background, isn't it? It's a definition, right? So we can put in here. Type and cause, yep. And we're going to see if that helps us later. So over here, I could go, it's a, uh, um, it says cause, type and cause of fracture. Yeah, it's a definition or a um, description. of fractures and it also mentioned someone said that before of fractures so we know what that is description and cause of fractures and um it also mentions yes thanks goodwill it also mentions um and types are mentioned so we know the topic okay Good, that's useful. And I do suggest you write this down on exam day. Then we go a little bit further, everyone. Now we go to the next one. We're going to text B, everyone, text B. And let's do that same sort of strategy. If my little Zoom allows me to do what I want. Zoom is being a bit non-compliant here. Pardon for my slowness. All right, so we have a read of this. We don't need all these ones. Let's get rid of these. Now, again, we're going to skim everyone. Now, this has got a lot of text, so we don't really want to read all of this text. It's going to slow us down, but there's a few features we want to pick up on. Uh, this time I'll use, I'll, I'll underline. Because that's what you can do on exam day. So simple fractures of limbs. Okay. So this is all about the simple fracture of the limb. So then we see headings and bullet points, immediate management. Now here, I'm just going to pick up words. I like to read the beginning, immobilize. And then I start to see a pattern, provide, clinical assessment. Obtain history. I'll, I'll only read to here. I won't read the rest. But my eyes pick up a word like anticoagulant and warfarin. I pick up on that. Perform observations. And I see these ones. Physical exam. Examine. Now, I've got a whole lot of information here. I don't really need to worry too much about that. But I might pick up. Um, examine wounds, but I just know this is examination. Check limb out of shape. Pulses. I'll grab a few words. Throbbing. Management. Splint. And here, I'm not going to read too much. Elevate. Sling. I'm picking up words. If in doubt. Administer analgesia. Consider compartment syndrome. X-ray. I'm looking at all my first words, everyone, because, and one thing you'll notice, a lot of these words, and this is important, these words, these words are verbs. So this is actions, what you do, right? Things you do. So if we get a question that's asking about that, we know to come to text B. That's going to help us. All right. What's text B about, everyone? You tell me. What's text B all about? Need says, can we underline text like that in the exam too? Absolutely, and you should, you must. Signs and symptoms, yep, that's mentioned. Signs and symptoms, but not, it does mention signs and symptoms good, your observations, yes, but it's all about management, isn't it? It's all about management. 
assessment and management of your patient. All right, that's useful information. So we'll put that here, everyone. Assessment and management. Okay, well done. Let's go to the next text, everyone. Let's go to the next text. Get rid of a few of these. I've got a lot to get rid of. So I've underlined all that. Now that's going to help you later. And I use my peripheral vision. I didn't really read sentences too much. I did a lot of chunking, but I got a good idea what's going on. And hopefully my memory will hold up. So when I go searching, I'm going to be a lot quicker. Okay. Now we go to text C, everyone. Text C. Oh, the table, everyone. I hope you like tables. Tables are good. Now, for me, I have a simple strategy with tables like this. I'm really interested in rows and columns, right? Just that design. So when I look at this, what I see as being most important is all of this information the drug, the form, the strength. I'm not so interested in the content. I'll use that later. The route, the recommended dose, and the duration. Okay, that's gold for me. I'm going to read this heading up the top. I'm probably not going to read too much else. Um, I'll quickly scan the table, but, you know, we might pick up on morphine, but I think not too much here. Just I'm not interested in the numbers. That's going to come later. Um, I do like to read the bottom information. So I might do this. Um, I might read this lower end of dose range in patients 70 or above. Um, I've got some symptoms here. I see that. I might look at that and I, and I see this as well. I always think pay special attention to what's the, below the table is quite important. Um, often there's information hidden there. Okay, what's this about, everyone? What's text C about? You tell me. What's text C all about? Bring in your answers. Analgesia, drug therapy, medication. Yeah, it's not that, it's not rocket science. It's not that hard. Yep. So we can put here, and we got the protocol, protocol. It's just medication protocol. Cool. We know the topic. That's what we want. Right. Let's do one more, everyone, before we move on. Our last one. which will be text D. Okay, have a read of text D, everyone, and tell me what that's all about. Text D. Technique for plaster back slab. So I'm going to have to read a few things here to get this right. People are already looking, getting ideas. So again, I'm just going to read the first sentence. Technique for plaster back slab uh, for arm fractures, use same principle for leg. I'll read that whole heading. And then it's just instructions. So I'm going to skim and scan because uh, we're lucky we got a heading, but measure something. And we've got some dimensions there. I'll pick up words, wrap cotton padding. Measure, measure the plaster, immerse. I'm just going to read the beginning of each, lightly mold. Do not apply pressure. Rape, crap, bandage. That's enough. I reckon I've used my three minutes, everyone. What's text D about? You tell me. What's text D about? How to apply a plaster? Yeah, plaster application that's how to apply it that's it okay. 
how to apply plaster. Now, let's see how many questions. We've done all of that hard work. Let's see how many questions we can um, text. Now, let's go to our matching questions. We've done that hard work, everyone, right? So number one, procedure for delivering pain relief. Which text do you think that is going to be under, everyone? Which text? I'm going to leave it over to you. Wait for your answers. Yeah, text A, B, C, or D, everyone. A, B, C, or D. Yep, in come the answers. Definitely, we can say that. It's going to be text C, all right? The procedure to follow when splinting a fractured limb. Does anyone remember that? The, the procedure, if you're going to splint it, what does that relate to? And we might just have to have a bit of a look. I think I saw a splint up here. Splint, the procedure to follow. Splint the site using a back slab. Mm, it's going to be B or D. Splint the site. Well, it's mentioned here. The procedure, splint the site using, uh, that's your procedure. That's under your management. Um, but let's check text D. Can we see the words when splinting a fractured limb? Well, I suppose putting a back slab is also splinting and it says, um, a fractured limb. Mm, I think that's text D, everyone. It's how to do it. Lightly mold, don't apply pressure. All right, we'll put D there. Because technique is, is procedure and technique. Technique and procedure. Um, and splinting, splinting is putting a back slab on it. Hmm, if we go back up. Management, splint the site using a back slab to reduce pain. What do you reckon, B or D? This just is an instruction. I think it's more D, everyone. I think it's more D. I'm going to go for D because it's got all the, it's a technique. Okay, let's put D, everyone. Uh, what to record when assessing a patient? Now, there's your keyword, assessing. What would you put for number three, everyone? What to record when assessing a patient? That's B, isn't it? Yes, B. People are putting in B because we, we know B is assessment and management. We've got it here, assessment and management. We know. Let's go quicker. The terms used to describe different types of fractures. Number four, different types. What's our answer, everyone? Different types. Got lots of correct answers coming through. You guys are doing great. Different types. We're going to go for, well, we got it up here, don't we? It's types. It's text A. It's got to be A. The practitioners who administer analgesia. Well, we know analgesia was medication. All right. We know it was medication. And it's up the top. So here we're going to go. And I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. That is C. There it is. And it even tells us up here, 
the practitioners there. It was up the top. Uh, but analgesia was your keyword. What to look for when checking an injury? And you should be able to work that one out. When were we checking an injury? What to look for? We should just be able to scroll up here. and go to text B. It's going to be right there. What to look for. And it says, check. There's a word in the middle, everyone. Check whether. That's all part of the assessment. So definitely that's B. And last one, how can fractures be caused? How can fractures be caused? So that's B. And cause of fracture, well, we know that we've got it written here. It's A. How easy was that, everyone? Easy peasy. We just um, annihilated that. Um, hopefully we got seven out of seven. And, I, and we didn't even really have to look too much in the text because we've done all the hard work here. So that's my advice to you all. It's that three-minute skimming that will set you up for your one to seven. If you just practice that pattern, it's going to get really, really easy for you. Um, and I would just do that again and again and get comfortable with it. Remember what I said in the beginning. These texts are logical. If you can work out the purpose of each text, you're going to find the matching questions relatively easy. All right, which is our goal. Okay, now we've done our matching questions and we'll have 10 minutes left. Now, these are some new questions, everyone. You might know this text, but I've written some new questions. So let's see if we can answer these. So I've got question five, everyone. Apart from information, we're going to do our short answers. We've got to answer with a word or short phrase. All right, make this a wee bit bigger. That helps you. Apart from information regarding the cause of injury, what other information should be elicited from a patient? So my first question is, what text, where would we look for five without going through them all? Which text do you think we should go to to find the answers here? Because uh, we're going to elicit from a patient. We're going to elicit from a patient. Well, it's not going to be medication, is it? It's not going to be plaster cast, and it's not going to be a description. It's going to be text B, isn't it? So you should go automatically to B because that's where you do your assessment. All right. And the key word for me here is, and it's a bit of a difficult word, but the key word for me here is elicit what should be elicited right so and now i've got apart from cause of injury so these are my search words this is where i'm going to scan so i scan looking for cause of injury in text b everyone and look i find this sentence method of injury there is a synonym so i think i'm in the right place and I see obtain complete medical history. So when you obtain, you elicit. That's our synonym. So what's the answer, everyone? And look, I've got inquire, another synonym, another synonym for elicit. And now I think we can see our answer, everyone. Yep, Christine, Christina, you're fast. We've already got it. We're going to write, there's a couple of options, medication history and all of these things. So I made this a longer answer, but your answer isn't. Just copy and paste, everyone. Medication history. Yep, that's correct. And in this case, it's a bit of a longer one. Anticoagulant use. E dot G dot 
for Fern. All of that relates to the question there, right? A bit longer than normal, but that was just to show you how to do it. Now, to answer this question quickly, you've got to know I'm going to deck B. You've just got to know that. If you get lost, if you go to A, if you go to D, if you go to text C, you are losing time. You are losing a lot of time, and that comes back to your initial skimming. You definitely don't want that. You want to be fast. Remember, we want to get at least 15 out of 20 for part A to be in the running for a good score. Okay, next one. What common side effects are, what are the common side effects associated with morphine? Now, this should be easy. Which text, everyone? Common side effects. Well, side effects are from medication, aren't they? So we know for sure that we have to go to text C. We know that, don't we? It's going to be straight to text C. Exactly, Suleika, text C. So we're going to jump here. And now we're looking for side effects. Now, remember, we did this before. We underlined these words. Now, that shows good skimming really quick. Can cause, and then Nazish has got it. We can be, you know, you know you've got 15 minutes for 20 questions, so we're really flying here. We can answer these in less than 30 seconds because we knew where to look. Nausea. Just write down those words. It's not hard because we've done the hard work. Vomiting, drowsiness, and your medical knowledge will take over, right? Need says this made the whole thing easier. Excellent. But can we underline the text and write in question paper? Absolutely. Don't think about recycling. <laughs> it's not your job. You don't need OET to recycle the paper. It's a working document. Write all over it, Neat, and everyone else. Okay, number seven. What position should the hand be in when applying the back slab? The back slab. Well, that's easy. Apply the back slab. We know that's text D. We know. So we're fast. Scroll along. Now I'm going to look for the word position. I'm searching for position and hand. And as I scroll down text D and I come to bullet point six, I can see it here. What position should the hand be in? Different answers coming through. We're in text D. Yes. Lightly mold the slab to the contours of the arm and hand. In hand, there's my keyword hand. I found it. I found my synonym. What position? Neutral position. What's the answer, everyone? Katazina got it. Yes, neutral. Smashed it. That's all we have to write. Neutral. And your exam, which you practice, should become like this. You have to be fast. You just have to know where to look. All right. Okay, we've smashed it. We've got two more questions, everyone, or maybe three. Let's have a look. Gap fill. So that were our short answer questions. Um, number eight. Let's have a look at number eight, everyone. If the nature of the injury cannot be established manage as a we got the word manage which text will we managing things on everyone where will we doing our management well it's not text d and it's not text c it's not even going to be text a because that's about the types of fractures it's going to be text b isn't it if the nature of injury cannot be established Manage as a. Now we've got to search through nature of injury. Nature of injury. So I'm looking for nature of injury. So 
So we manage as something. Oh, actually, maybe if, maybe I have to go a bit higher here. Let me check that one. Mm hmm. Examine and record. Um, see if you can help me out here, everyone. If the nature of injury cannot be established, ah, I've got it. I'm going to go down to manage. It's not at the top. It's down here. Management, management. Okay, not assess, but I was in the wrong management. Down the bottom. Splint the site. Elevate the limb. Cannot be established. Aha. Look at bullet point three, everyone. If in doubt over injury, here it is. If in doubt over injury, treat as a fracture. That was a little bit hard to find. If in doubt, but people got it. Well done. Diana, treat as a fracture. Great work. There it is. Manage is a synonym for treat. And be very careful, everyone, for this type of question, because this is a, um, I should have picked up on this too. If, if in doubt, that's your synonym. If it cannot be established. So you've got to be good with your synonyms. There's our answer. Number nine, as part of routine clinical examinations, it's important to, well, this is going to be a verb, something, signs and symptoms associated with the injury. Well, we're still on text B. We're going to go back up to clinical. There's our key word. All right, and I'm, I start looking through and I see the word routine and I see standard. Perform standard clinical observations. Yes, yeah, standard routine, that's a synonym. The answer must be here, everyone. It must be. It must be here. It's important to do something, signs and symptoms. I'm looking for signs and symptoms, everyone. Oh, here it is. Color, warmth, movement. These are signs and symptoms of injured limb. So then I've got to go backwards. Can you see the answer, everyone? Can you see? Yes, people are getting it. Well done. The answer is record. You guys are good. Um, I don't need to put examine. You could write examine, but it's clinical examination. So we're just going to put the word record. It's a bit of a hard one. But there's your answer, everyone. So we just go backwards. This one it's going to take you longer to answer on exam day because you've got to read the whole lot and go back to get the answer. But there it is. Last one. Apply pressure to the wound site to stop something. Okay, we need to stop something and we're going to apply pressure. Apply pressure. Again, I saw a lot of actions here. Consider, splint perform, obtain. And this is what you're doing. This one's also got to be B, I think, because this is assessment and manage. This is, you're still managing the patient. So we're still on text B. And this happens a lot. You'll get several in a row on one section. So here it says, halt any external hemorrhage by pressure bandage or direct pressure. Ooh. Can anyone see the synonym for stop? We're in text B, isn't it? It says halt. Halt means stop. I know I'm in the right place. What are we trying to stop, everyone? Hemorrhage, that's right. And I would use two words to answer this. Copy and paste, everyone. External. And spell it right, everyone. Spell it as you see it. No marks for incorrect spelling. Done. External hemorrhage. All right. And make sure you know your synonyms, everyone. You've got to be sharp on this. Stop means halt. 
this is all, well, any reading and listening to it, but it's always about the synonyms, everyone. All right, let's take a deep breath. Whew, bit of pressure with part A, isn't there? All right, bit of pressure there. I'm going to clear my drawings. Now, what I did today, I looked at simple fractures, everyone, and uh, I wrote up some new questions here. And you can do this yourself. A nice strategy I would suggest to you, if you want to get good at part A, practice writing your own questions to a text. Has anyone ever done that? Have you ever... Uh, have you ever written questions yourself? Meg says, would you provide new reading material? We've done it long before. Um, I wrote brand new questions, Meg. These are all the short answers and, and the gap fills were brand new questions. And I suggest you try this. Find a good topic. If you can write your own questions, then you will be getting in the mindset of how to locate really good to help you get a higher score. Right, I'm going to stop that chair. Too many windows open. Um, and now I suggest, yeah, look, just get out there and practice. Um, and also for new material, just remember, everyone, at OET Online, we have reading classes every Tuesday. We have two live classes per day, and we're constantly analyzing new material, um, your part A. So come and join us at oetonline.net.au uh, to find out about our great course options for reading. The more you practice, the better you get. And that's the way we've designed our courses to maximize input. We don't repeat our classes. So two live classes every Tuesday for reading, each with different content. All right, now I'm going to throw it out to questions from the audience. Um, Shadon says, can I write in the margin of the sheet and highlight editing? Yes, you can. And I think it's a, a good little strategy, good little note taking. Absolutely. Uh, other questions that are coming through, I'll make sure I can see everyone's questions. Uh, Rhoda says, what's the time? Look, we design our class to suit all locations, everyone. So we're running classes at the moment in the morning slot. There'll be a class tonight at 10 a.m. UK time. Um, so, yes, there are, um, we've got time suitable to all regions, everyone. Um, now, what else did I want to tell you? Glad that was useful, Charlotte. Um, Look, if I just go back to my uh, earlier thing, everyone. Let me just do this. Getting back to where we were, everyone. Um, now, look, we're helping people. This is a bit of promotion, everyone, but... We're helping people from everywhere. Great news for all you Canadians. Um, OET is now accepted in Canada. So we're looking forward to filling up that spot with lots of Canadian students. We're helping people from the USA to pass. Well done, all you US bound health professionals. Congratulations, this is a bunch of people who passed recently. Ireland, ticking all the boxes for Ireland. UK, a lot of people going to the UK, um, doing our courses and passing. Not only medicine and nursing, though. If you're a pharmacist or a physio, you can see we're getting great success there, everyone. So that's really um, terrific to see. Congrats to Doa and Edmund. Um, Australian-bound people getting through all different professions there. Singapore and New Zealand. So... It doesn't matter where you're going, study with OET online and expect to get a good result. Um, and if you want to do a free trial course, everyone, just come and check it out. We do an orientation every Wednesday, um, but you can check out all our free stuff. And then if you think it 
suits your needs, come and join us, everyone. Come and join us on the website. And I'll just um, show you how to do that very quickly. This is our website, everyone. And uh, all you need to do is create an account. We'll just bring up create a new account. I'm going to give you this page, everyone. Uh, I'll just drop it into your chat and just click on that. Cost you nothing. Check it out. See if you like it. We get, as I said, we get so much success. So I do recommend you check that out. But uh, we'll, we'll continue our YouTube channels as well as we always do. All right, and I'm just dropping that up in a few places. Okay. All right. Um, Hin says, any pharmacists preparing for UK? Um, Hin, come and join us. We have a student forum. You can get some great study buddies there as well, Hin. So check that out. May says, would OET for nursing be easier than medical doctors? Take it in the profession you were trained, mate, is the best advice. Suja says, when I write a request letter for a home visit by a physio or a nurse, do we need to write the address of the patient? I'd say that's optional for you, Suja. Okay. Diana says, your course is amazing. I just enrolled 10 days ago. Yay. Glad you're enjoying it. That's terrific to hear. Um, all right, I think I've covered everyone. We're done, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. You've been a wonderful audience. Um, I'm going to have Catherine come and do a great session for you in a week's time, in a month's time. Great speaking one, but I'll be back after that. So see you in a while. Good luck in your exams. Um, Seth saying, how do I register for the course? Sethu, I've just put the link in there for you and anyone else interested, check it out there. Then uh, create an account, check out the course options. You can do all skills. You can do single skills. And I'll see you in class. Okay. Bye for now.